Good start. Good start. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Gazbot. Welcome to Starship Artwork. No, uh, I am Gazbot. This is not a starship, and if it was, I certainly wouldn't call it artwork. I'd call it something like Chrome Cyberhawk Blaze 5. Anyway, what are we doing here? Well, we're going to do a warm-up sketch, and we're going to do a warm-up sketch of... Well, I'm doing a drum roll, but if you've read the title, you know. Uh, from the Filmation... Not Filmation. From the Hanna-Barbera cartoon... Uh, Herculoids, the character Zok, which is a dragon-like character, but it's also sort of a dinosaur and magic. The Herculoids have their own set of rules. Uh, so I'm going to jump right into that, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I chose this, and here we am go, draw. And I'm a little box on the top as the thing goes, as the thing goes. So here we go. I'm going to do Zok. You can see I have my reference uh, on the left, mm, over, th over there. I have to do the mirror image down, over, whatever. Uh, and Zok, as I said, is sort of a dragon creature. Now, the Herculoids is a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Let me start my timer here. Uh, but before I get into... I was going to talk a little bit about my knowledge of the Herculoids. Before I get into that, uh, let me talk about why I'm doing the Herculoids. I put up a uh, What Me sketch on Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook and Instagram and all the various places, as I occasionally do. Uh, so if you are interested in suggesting something, follow me, and you too may occasionally have the chance to suggest things. Um, I got a few suggestions. I put it up last night, and uh, it's not really a... Sometimes it's a, a literal voting system where I'm like, tell me which one you want, and whoever gets the most votes. Sometimes it's just suggest things, and I pick one that sounds good to me that day. Uh, I wasn't... This wasn't officially a vote one, but this uh, the Herculoids got two votes. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's the only one that got more than one vote, and it also gave me a little bit of freedom because it didn't say to do Zok. It said do a character from the Herculoids, uh, and there are several monster characters and several human characters, so it gave me a bit of freedom to pick what I wanted. Uh, so that's always desirable for an artist, as you know. So uh, I, I did that. Now, what's interesting is that um, it once again affirmed my social media biases, biases, bias, whatever, because uh, I, I post it natively on Instagram, uh, which is where I do most of my posting, to be honest, and then I share it to Facebook and other places. So uh, my interaction, I put it up late last night, and it's uh, afternoon-ish now, so on Tumblr, not one response, uh, which is par for the course. For me, t Tumblr is a wasteland and has been ever since I got on. I Supposedly there was a heyday once or if you do it properly or whatever, but I either missed the boat or I do it improperly because I never get any interaction on Tumblr. Twitter, uh, no one. I do get some interaction on Twiddler. Uh, Twiddler. <laughs> oh, gross. Ah, come on to Twiddler and I'm going to show you how to draw. That's not what we're about here. <laughs> but I, I do occasionally get some interaction on Twitter. But once again, I don't do much on Twitter. It's really a lot more uh, reposting from Instagram or something like that. We're using Twitter to repost to Facebook. Uh, I'm not sure about the pose of his hands there, but I'm just going to keep going for now. Um, and the other thing... Oh, okay, and I repost to Facebook. Now, I have my own personal Facebook, and I have my Gazbot Artist Facebook, which if you want to follow me, that's uh, where you'd want to do it. Uh, so no response on Tumblr, no response on Twitter. On Instagram, I got three suggestions. Uh, Mumra, Magic from the X-Men, and Reaper from Overwatch. Of those, um, I was most excited to do Magic from the X-Men. Uh, I like Mumra, but I've done Mumra. Uh, and uh, while I like Overwatch, Reaper's not my favorite character. It'd probably be fun to draw because he's kind of a gothy, monster -y kind of monster guy. I'm moving this the wrong way. There we go. And uh, But yeah, so then I went to Facebook, and uh, I got suggested Darth Revan, Red Hood, or Blue Beetle. All from the same person, which I never understand that, and you know who you are. Uh, and then uh, somebody said a self-portrait, which I've done a lot in the past. I haven't done recently. I guess I could do it. Although I did say established character. Am I an established character? Maybe. Uh, I got requested Thor, but I literally did Thor yesterday. So I was like, well, here, it's Thor, done. So, hey, you win. It's done. Uh, then I got Devilman, one of the Herculoids. Uh, and then the person who voted for Devilman, I'm not drawing here, uh, switched his vote to one of the Herculoids uh, out of his excitement for that uh, concept. And then I also got two suggestions, Suru from the new Star Trek or Crichton from Red Dwarf. All good suggestions. I thank everybody who gave them. Uh, I did decide to go with the Herculoids. Uh, again, it wasn't a vote to vote, but I kind of treated it as such after the fact. Um, and I'm looking at our buddy Zach here. And I was going to see, here's the thing. Normally, for these warm sketches, I do one of two things. I do a headshot like this, 
or I do a quick full body. And I guess I was starting to do a headshot with him, but maybe I should do a full body. The problem with that is if I'm doing a full body, I want him flying, and I kind of messed up the flying pose. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to scratch everything. This is where digital comes in handy. I'm going to scratch everything except his little head. Okay, so I scratch everything except for his little head. And, the, oops, what do you do? You make, yes, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. So I guess uh, the pose, he, I guess he's most known for in battle, he, I assume it's a boy, but I don't know, uh, is this one over here. I, 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 here. I'll circle it on the reference sheet. This one, see it? La, 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 la. Where he can, when he's flying, he can shoot lasers out of his eyes and also his tail because, yeah, that's overkill, but that's fine. Uh, the Herculoids, uh, for, from what I remember, are generally overpowered uh, against their, all their enemies. It's basically like the only time they're in trouble is like, oh, one of us got caught alone or the boy fell into a trap. But it's like once they're all there, you've basically got He-Man, Shira, baby He-Man, uh, a dragon, some blob monsters and a rock king kong oh and a triceratops that has a machine gun on his head so it's like oh we're all here we win you know like <laughs> it's just a matter of time like can they show up in time yes uh we win it's kind of like the thundercats in that way where once the whole team shows up that's pretty much all she wrote i'm yeah i'm doing weird things with this this is a uh, probably not a good choice for me to do a video and warm up i feel like i say that a lot so I'll, I'll stop saying that this is a great choice guys i've done i've made a great decision uh i have decided not to have him shooting out of his tail um mainly because i'm having trouble getting that pose quickly i want to i want to not just copy one of these photos i'm looking at you know one of these pulls from the cartoon uh so i'm, I'm kind of looking at the character design that's the tough thing about this stuff this is a character i've never drawn it's a type of character i don't normally draw and so i want it to be accurate to the character but i don't i don't want to literally just copy what i'm looking at so like if i was doing a, a real drawing like if this was a commission or if it was a published piece or something i would probably would copy a lot of these and do a couple headshots and a couple body shots and turnarounds or what maybe not turnarounds that might be a bit much but the point is i would get used to drawing the character then i would make up a pose and using my new knowledge of the character you know go from there but with these warm-ups i'm oftentimes learning how to draw the character the first time I draw it. So inevitably, I'm going to be pulling a lot from the reference. Um, yeah, that, that's not too terrible. It's weird because it's not a full body, but I, I, to get his wings in, I'd have to make him so small. I'm kind of uh, making a compromise. Also, I, I'm, I'm inclined to want to move him down like this so you can see more of the wings. But since he's a flying character, I want to leave room underneath here, some negative space to indicate that he is actually in the air. Maybe I'll put like a mountain or something. I don't know. So we'll call that the base rough. And then I drop that down to 50%. Lock that layer and add another. Hey, look how short I am. Let me goop. There, you can see me a little better now. So I am at about seven minutes right now. Um, so now, who are the Herculoids? Well, the Herculoids are a cartoon made by Hanna-Barbera. Uh, I think it came out in like the late 60s originally, but it's known uh, to me from the early 80s. And Hanna-Barbera uh, is a is slash was a huge animation company. I actually, I think it still exists, but it definitely doesn't exist like it used to, even if it does. Oops, why did I pick red? Ah, whatever, it's red now. Um, and it it has, uh, Alex Toth uh, is an artist who did a lot of the designs. And basically my uh, uneducated, uncouth opinion of, of Hanna-Barbera is that they have a lot of really great character designs and a lot of cool backgrounds. But the animation is generally terrible, and some of their ideas are very derivative. Um, now, what's funny is, I think of the Hercules as being derivative of, like, He-Man. Uh, because when I saw it, it came out, you know, I saw, uh, there was He-Man, Thunder the Barbarian, Black Star. Uh, the Herculoids, maybe I'm forgetting one, but there was a lot of, like, fantasy and fantasy mixed with magic. And as a kid, I, you know, I didn't know the history. I was unaware of timelines. He-Man was probably the first one I was aware of. And so, to my mind, and he was also by far the most popular, uh, He-Man the Masters of the Universe. And so, to my mind, all the others were, like, imitators. You know, they were trying to capitalize on He-Man, which clearly is not true because He-Man was created in the 80s and Hercules was created in the 60s. Although I do suspect that the reason they, they were brought back and packaged, I also remember Hanna-Barbera, Often, with, with some exceptions, I watched GoBots, which I believe was Hannah Barbera, which I also always thought of as a ripoff of Transformers, but that's a whole other thing. Um, 
oh, I'm getting out of, I'm getting out of control here. Often uh, they would package them with other shows. They'd have a bunch of space shows, a bunch of action shows, a bunch of comedy shows, and it would be like the Hanna Barbera Super Hour or the Hanna Barbera Space uh, what was it Space Hour Space Stars. And things like that. So that's most of my experience with Hanna-Barbera is as an anthology sort of thing. And it would be on for a few hours, and you never knew which shows you were going to get. And some I like better than others. Herculoids was not a favorite of mine, which is weird because I like monsters. And, like, even looking at these designs, they're great. But I, I think it was a little bit too fantasy. I've never been a fan of, like, the family dynamic. I, with some exceptions. I did like Bionic 6. Uh, I'm looking at his eyes here in the reference. And if I'm going to show you. Here, it's almost like a starburst. Here, it's like a black eye pupil, and then here, it's like orange. It looks like there's a couple different variations, so I'm, I think I'm going to go with the, the black eye pupil, like orange thing, kind of like this. It makes him look a little friendlier, I think. I guess that's probably the difference is when he's like, I'm a monster shooting lasers versus like, I'm your buddy. So he's not shooting a laser, so he's my buddy. Give him some nostrils, and he's got a delineation of color here, which actually, I probably should just draw that in color. I'm not going to... Yes. Okay. Um, so Hanna Barbera had the 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 various anthology series, and I was not a huge fan of most of the comedies. Uh, I think they did Flintstones, which I liked, but uh, the the like Yogi Bear and Snagglepuss and all that stuff. I didn't really like them as a kid. I was definitely much more of an action kid, uh, and, and even to this day, I, I you know there are some comedies I like uh, as far as animation, but I prefer action adventure kind of stuff. So I would watch these and ne was never sure what I was going to get. I wasn't even sure if I was going to get the right genre, let alone my favorites in that genre. Herculoids was in the right genre, uh, and I didn't hate it, but it was not one of my favorites. Um, strangely enough, one of my favorites was one that I couldn't even remember the name of, and I've talked to people about it, and a lot of times they don't remember it. It was on in the 80s, and I think it was created in the 80s, which is probably partially why I liked it, because it seemed more modern. Uh, and it was called – got to look it up right now next to me because I forgot already. It was called – Teen, teen Force, I think, which is a terrible name, but it was three teenage space superheroes, two guys and a girl, and they all had special powers and these kind of like space motorcycle things, um, and, and it was sort of like the closest thing to superheroes I could get at that time other than Spider-Man or something. So I like that, and I like science fiction better than fantasy overall. Uh, they did have two little things called uh, like Astromites or something, which... It, 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 all these cartoons back then had these, like, kid characters or goofy comic relief, and a lot of them I didn't like. Some were better than others, like Snarf on Thundercats. I didn't mind him so much, and he was supposed to be kind of this whining nanny that you're supposed to kind of laugh at, and so it, it made sense. And he sometimes, like, would save the day. But, uh, like, these little Gloop, no, Gloop and Gleep were the, the blobs from Herculoids. I forget the name of these other guys, but they had, like, big heads, and I don't know. I just, it was, I never understood it. I guess it was to take the edge off the action, but again, as a kid, I'm like, I want action. I don't need the edge taken off. Uh, getting back to Herculoids, the, the designs are great, and I've seen they have toys of them, which I, I would kind of like, and I remember it came out around the time Space Ghost Coast to Coast was getting big, and, um, you know, they, it was sort of this weird mix of nostalgia for the original shows, plus Cartoon Network rebranding them as these ironic comedies, so there was toy lines coming out, so the Space Ghost toy line was like he came with a desk, and, you know, he was an interviewer, but then they came out with the Herculoids and Thundar, and, like, I was barely aware that they were coming out at the time, and now I think they're a little bit hard to get and a little bit expensive, so I don't want to spend that extra money, but I, they would be cool to have on my shelf, uh, just, even if it was just the monsters, um, but I'm not going to go out of my way and, and, and spend that extra money. I'd have to find them at a great deal. Uh, and I, I said I wasn't going to delineate the color with line, and then I did, so I guess I better do it up here too. He's got, you know, like a lot of dragons, animals, things like that. There's like a lighter underbelly. Um, I don't know why that is. There's probably a natural biological reason for that. Um, maybe because the sun. No, that's a, I don't know. I don't know. There's a reason. There's a reason. Someone knows it. Uh, not me. All right, so I'm taking a little, little little bit of liberty with the legs here. Um, I'm putting them in a pose they don't normally necessarily go in. I kind of made these shin calf areas a little thicker than they should be, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I like the way it looks. Uh, and maybe what I'll do is, yeah, that eye looks weird on the left there. La, 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 la. Move it out a little bit. So he's sort of looking up, so it should be more like this. That's better. All right, and then I did say I was going to put some mountains. Now, I should probably reference mountains, but I'm not going to... I mean, mountains from the way Hanna-Barbera and the Herculoids would show it. 
So I'll put this in. But yeah, so the action cartoons, I, I prefer the sci-fi. Again, like also there was Space Ghost before he was a coast-to-coast -coast talk show host. He, you know, he was a guy that lived in space. He was kind of like a space cop, and he could turn invisible and fly and shoot lasers and stuff. But he had Jan and Jay, uh, Jan and Jace, I think were their names, which were his like teen sidekicks, and they could also fly and turn invisible. And they weren't as good as him, but they weren't terribly annoying. They were like Robin. They were okay. But then they had the Space Monkey, who I think his name was Gleek, and he was annoying. Like I don't know why. They were so ubiquitous, and I don't know why they bothered me so much, but the two certainly went hand in hand. Um, yeah, Hanna-Barbera Hanna -Barbera is weird because it, it does have a lot of good stuff going for it, but when I talked about the derivative stuff, now, I thought of this show as being derivative of He-Man. Thundar, I'm not so sure because I think he made of – came out later than Hercules, but I don't know if he came out before He-Man. I'm sure I could look this up, but I'm just trying to talk off the top of my head. And uh, there you go. Um let me go ahead and put in it. What, how much time we got here? Let me look real quick to see if I have time to clean it up more. Yeah, well, this is going pretty quick. We're not even at 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to put this down to 50%. Unlock this. Put this down to 25. Then lock that. And then I'm going to do one more pass to try to get a little bit tighter on the details here. Because I still have kind of like a rough pencil -y line. Let me go for a little bit of almost digital inks. So going back to the derivative thing, I'd have to like do my research to know exactly, you know, with Thundar and He-Man and all that stuff. But Hanna Barbera was sort of derivative of itself a lot because it had like, for example, it had um, Scooby Doo. Okay, and and I did like Scooby Doo as a kid. Actually, funny side note, I remember I used to watch it at my aunt's house, and at one one day she said something to the effect of like, God, they're always watching this. It's always the same episode or something. Like she thought. Because she didn't really watch it with me. She'd, like, drift in and out. And so she thought there was only, like, one episode of Scooby-Doo or that they were always showing the same episode or she always caught the same episode. And I didn't know what she meant. And it was because it was, you know, one of any episode where there's a monster in it and they're running away from the monster. And she didn't realize that, like, the whole show was them running away from monsters. Like, every episode is, oh, there's a monster. Oh, it turned out to be Farmer Joe, you know, or whatever. But so she... Then after that, she's like, we well, shouldn't be watching this. Like, she thought it was like a one-off Halloween special or something like that. Oh, this is an ear. I thought he has a horn in the middle, and then he has ears. I thought it was horns, but they're both kind of ears. So let me change that slightly. The main thing I did was uh, not make it such a delineation line right there uh, to make it not – yeah, I mean, they have a line, but I whatever. Uh, when it's a horn or something, I feel like there should be a line, but when it's ears, I, was, I make it a softer line. So anyway – uh. She thought, yeah, that it was – she kept catching the same show, and then she was unhappy with me watching it. But my argument was, like, I've been watching it this whole time. Well, we're going to change things now. And I don't know that I won that argument, but uh, I finished watching that episode at least. So anyway, uh, that show is popular. And, and again, not to do my homework, I, I wonder – I assume that show came first, but I don't know that it did. Um, but regardless which came first, it was the most popular, and – they also had Speed Buggy, which was a very similar show, a group of teens investigating um, mysteries, but instead of like a talking dog, they had a talking car named Speed Buggy. And then there was Jabberjaw, which was uh, a group of teens investigating mysteries or whatever, and instead of a talking car or a dog, they had a talking shark. And he definitely had like a very goofy voice, and he's like, <laughs> I'm Jabberjaw. That's a bad impression, but the point is he wasn't scary at all. And uh, then they had uh, – was it like Groovy Ghost? There was a ghost one where it was a funky phantom. That's what it was. And it was like the same thing, a group of teens and a talking phantom of some like revolutionary war guy or something. And, and so it's like, geez, man, like they get an idea that kind of works and they, they milk it. And I hated all those shows. I didn't hate Scooby-Doo. Speed Buggy was the most tolerable of the other ones because it was actually probably closest to Scooby-Doo. It even had a guy that basically looked like Shaggy, but he had goggles on. And I actually kind of liked it better than Shaggy because instead of being like a stoner hippie, he was sort of like a car fixer-upper guy. Like So that appealed to me more. Not that I'm not into cars, but uh, it, it, he seemed more like a go-getter. He had goggles. He was going places. Uh, and I realize I'm not talking a lot about Hercules. Let me get back to Hercules. So Hercules was a like second or third stringer in terms of what I wanted to watch, but it was a solid show in terms of design and 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 concept, and especially I guess the fact that it came from the '60s and and did kind of hold up to an '80s aesthetic. I give it more credit now as an adult than I did as a kid because I was just judging it against everything else I saw at the time. Excuse me, and. Uh, 
yeah, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of anything else to talk specifically about the Herculoids, and I, I, my memory of them, I mean, I definitely remember watching it, I remember the names of most of the characters, actually, let me see, off the top of my head, okay, I did not know this character, Zok, I did not know that was the name of his character, off the top of my head, I had to look it up, I was like, the dragon from Herculoids, so, uh, Gloop and Gleep, which were the Blob characters, which were not my favorites. They they serve that purpose of, like, the goofy comic relief. I like the idea of them because they could stretch and turn into things. And the way they drew them was cool. They had, like, these weird outlines and stuff. Um, so they were interesting characters, but they did them comedically, so I didn't appreciate that. Um, there was the Triceratops guy. I don't remember what he was called. I say Triceratops. He didn't have three horns. He was just a armored dinosaur-looking character. Um... Yeah, I can't remember his name at all. Then there was uh, a... He was a stone monster, but he was very ape-like. Uh, you can see him over here. He, like It almost looked like they took an ape and made him into a, a stone monster. And I don't remember his name either. <laughs> um, so, so far, the only monsters I remember the name of are Gloop and Gleep, who were the ones I didn't really like. So, I, I guess they were doing something right, but I suspect also that they were in more episodes and more adventures, because they were the least powerful, and one of them was, like, younger, and so they served the purpose of, like, oh, the dopey kids getting into trouble kind of thing, even more than the actual kids sometimes, I think. Or he would get in trouble, and they'd go for help. Gloop, keep, uh, help me, go get mom and dad. And then they'd go blobbing off to find him. So I think their names were said a lot, and they were in a lot of uh, situations. So I attribute my memory of them more to exposure as opposed to uh, liking them. I was thinking of a better word for liking them, but I couldn't. So, okay, now, and as far as the family, like I said, there was the, the, the father, the mother, and the kid, and they were all, like, super warrior types. I don't know if they had, ma they had weapons. I don't know if they had magic weapons or not. I can't remember, but I want to call them, like, Shana, although they're, they're Shana... Like, I feel like that's just a common, like, warrior jungle woman name. I don't know if that's actually her name, but I'm going to go with that. And his name was, like, um... He Shana? <laughs> that's not right! I don't know what his name is. I don't know any character's names, unless I luckily got her name right. And Stupid Gloop and Gleep, my least favorite characters from the show. Well, good job, Hanna-Barbera. You tricked me into knowing those stupid characters that I didn't even want to know. That being said, uh, I almost drew them. They were the ones I was most visually interested in drawing, other than uh, Zok here. Not because their like their monster designs are especially cool in the traditional sense, like you know how do you beat a dragon or a stone you know monkey monster. Uh, it more just because of the coloring and the way they did the weird outlines. I thought that might be a fun thing to try to replicate and copy. But I also thought I would be done with that one in about seven minutes, and I wanted to do something a little bit more challenging. So uh, speaking of challenge, let's see where we're at time. We're at about 22 minutes, so we're doing okay. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to color. Now, I guess that's good. I did the sort of pencil last layer where I did delineate the color, but now that I went in with the, you know, quote-unquote inks, I didn't. And I'm not gonna put ink on the mountain, I'll just do that in color. So I'm gonna leave all this. I'm gonna bring that first layer down to 10%. Actually, I'm gonna erase that first layer. I don't need that. Get out of here, first layer. Ha <laughs> ha, you're fired. All right, and then this second pencil layer, I'll bring this down to 25. Leave the ink layer as it is. I'm gonna lock those so I don't make a mistake. Lock, lock, lock. And then, what's this layer? This layer, well, this layer will be my, oh, I just realized I messed up the inks on the wing there. Did I restart my timer? Let me check if I restarted my timer. I never stopped it. Okay, good. So, <laughs> let me erase that line real quick. And yeah, it's a, now I did a very flat line here as opposed to a thin and thick that you would normally want to do for comics. But considering it's animation and it's, uh, you know, Hanna-Barbera and Alex Toth, that's actually pretty appropriate. I keep coming back to mess with this eye, but I think I'm doing the right thing here. Let me go five. Uh, although there is a thick and thinness of line there, but it's, it's more intentional and it's a flat deadline. Uh, but, well, it's not even, yeah, I guess it is a deadline, but there is... Deadline, not in terms of getting it done at a certain time, but having no variation of line thickness within a line. But the different lines have different thicknesses for interior, exterior lines, etc. I don't know why I'm having some trouble with this eye. Let me shut up for a second. Shut up, you. Me? Yeah. If I'm making a triangle, that's still not right. I guess he's looking up. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe if I match the angle. That's a little better. I, I kind of tried to match the rough angle that the you know triangle, light pupil, whatever 
opening that is. All right, I'm talking too much and drawing too little. So put a couple of them jams in. Let me go in with color now, like I was going to. And I'm just going to sample straight from this bottom left one, which I believe is a production cell. So it would be the truest color, whereas the others are a lot of, hey, we pulled these off of you know an animation on TV. I'm going to switch to pencil uh, so that I could fill it easier. It gives you a more jagged bitmappy edge on it, so it's not as good for you know nice coloring. But if you need to fill an area, you don't have to worry about it not filling in or leaving that weird ghost line you sometimes get when you do a bucket fill if you're using a brush. I forgot to wow, I didn't I I was drawing look at these ink lines, I'm just now noticing I missed. I was drawing so zoomed in, I didn't realize that I didn't like I thought that was the edge of the paper there, so I'm gonna have to go back in and fix that. But not right now, I'm just gonna concentrate on color. Because we are getting close. Maybe I'll just leave it. Uh, we are getting close to 30 minutes, which is what I wanted to stick with. Yeah, we're at about 24 and a half right now. The video itself is a bit longer, but that's because I talked in the beginning. I'm a talking monkey. If I was stone, then I could be on the Herculoids. They'd be like, who's that? Like, I don't remember his name, but he's a talking stone monkey. Ah, who's this? <laughs> oh, that's annoying and glopper. Yeah, we know them, annoying and glopper, because they're just always glopping and annoying. I guess I could, I could, I could definitely be an annoying glopper. <laughs> that's, that's my, I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> he definitely could have been an annoying glopper. Or he was an annoying glopper. Or just glopper. Guys, when you get to the end <laughs> of a half hour of talking to yourself, you start to run out of cognizant, cognizant, cohesive, cohesive things to say. Um, and you just start talking about gloppers i was uh thinking of an alien race oh this is not going to go anywhere good i'm going to stop <laughs> it's just uh i'm talking about nonsense so let me talk to you about some even more nonsense stuff that i was thinking about all right so this is taking longer than i'd like what i should have done is finish those ink lines and make sure they were touching and then selected that area and filled it but i didn't so this is what we get pluck pluck okay i am going to go fix those ink lines now because that looks weird without them so there's ink let me switch back to this let me switch back to my brush at 19 75 percent so it matches wives man say only fools rush in and i'm rushing and so i'm a fool Ugh, it's the worst is trying to connect a wide sweeping line with another one because they always get that little they didn't quite match and and in this case i had it at 75 percent opacity so then there's gonna be a little darker overlay i'm not gonna worry about the darker overlay but i'm gonna try to clean that up a little bit that line it was not intentional but i'll leave it because it kind of looks like a fold in his anatomy <laughs> fold in his anatomy the new album by trent reznor of nine inch nails i got some fold in my anatomy <laughs> I feel the fold, it's becoming the part of me. He just rhymed me with me. That is lazy. The hell? And I'm also using the same basic uh, beats that he used, probably, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm criticizing my on-the-fly parody of a Trent Reznor song as though I didn't do it and had spent more time doing it. What did I say about gloppy? Gloppy. All right, what am I doing? I'm going in with small lines. That's not what we're here for. Stop it. Okay, I'm stopping it, but I want to do that. <laughs> I anger myself and the people. All right, let me check time. I know it's getting bad. 27 and a half. All right, so let me... I'm not going to put any shading. I'm just going to try to do flat colors because, again, it is animation, baby. Now, I am going to select that so I don't have to worry about falling outside the lines. Now, I'm just going in to try to put his yellow belly. That's funny because I don't remember him being cowardly. So I don't think this was like an inside colorist joke. It's not like he's Cringer from He-Man or something. Cringer? Cringer. What a weird name. He's cowardly. Let's call him Cringer. Why? Because he's always cringing. Uh, and as I say this, I never made that connection. Cringer. He's always cringing. If you watch the opening to He-Man, or, well, anytime he transforms, but it's in the opening, so it'd be easier to find there. He, uh, am I doing that right? Yeah, because his tail is turned up towards him. Uh... He-Man's like, ah, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power! And then he points his so sword at Cringer to turn him into Battle Cat, and he's literally just cowering and cringing. Like, they could have called him Cowerer, and it would have made just as much sense. Are the inside of his wings yellow? No. Ah, it's interesting. Alright, so, yellow. Nope, did that wrong. Didn't seal it off here. See, I gotta seal it. 
Now it'll work. Bloot, bloot. A little bit in here. Glug, glug. And then that was sealed. You know what? I'm going to get rid. Now that I did that, I'm going to get rid of this. Well, most of this underlayer. I want to keep the mountains. Select the. Oops. Select these. And then I'll select inverse to delete the rest. Doot. I'm going to save for the first time, which I should have done all along. Ah, oh, God, I hate that. Very often when I go to save, it gives me version queue instead. Because I guess check in is right next to save as. And that happens. So much to me. I'm also using uh, Photoshop CS3. Maybe they change that later. But I own this, and I don't feel the need to pay a monthly subscription service, so I'm sticking with this until I literally cannot use it anymore and have to change. Kind of like I am with all updates. iTunes needs to update your blah, blah, blah. All right, well, you know, in a few months, you'll force me to do it, and hopefully all the bugs will be worked out by then. And that's, uh, that's when we'll do it. No incentive to do it sooner. And this should be filled, I realize. All the way will look better. Good. All right. So the eyes. Let me zoom in on this. Oops, let me zoom in on this character sheet to see if I can get. Well, character cell. Is that? Yeah. It's. I guess the yellow in the middle of the eye is the same as, the belly. Maybe. It's not quite clear, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. So it looks good. And I realize that I should have this a little bit more in here. And I'll just touch up. I did that bad. Plala, plala, I'll undo it, good. Plala, la, la, la. Folded anatomy. <laughs> I'm making me laugh. Welcome to join me if you want. Oh, and his, yeah, see, oh no, he has yellow. It's interesting the way the lighting works, because you can see in my reference how it's like a pink, it's a brown, but I'm going to go ahead and match his face coloring to the body. Yeah, it looks like the whole thing should match. And I, I cut rid of the line that I had drawn in, so I'll just have to approximate. Now, actually, they do have the line drawn in, like, in the reference in the, the animation. But I think it would look nicer, and in modern day, they probably wouldn't, to just have the color be the line. You don't have to actually draw it in anymore. I mean, it's a stylistic choice. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to take some of this pinkish-brown in the eye and just put it in on the sides here so yeah that's good all right so the i'm gonna leave these mountains as is because i don't have time to do much else i think we're at are we at 30 minutes we're at 32 minutes right now so the only thing i have time for i have time for nothing really but i'm gonna just put some color in the background there's a lot of purple over here so i'm just gonna quick throw some i'll grab a brush with some texture just any brush and then i'll bring it up to like 327 pixels bring it down to 50 percent and then i'll do a bunch of color that actually that looks very hanna barbera herculoid z that color so I, that was a good quick pick and then i'll do a few more of these all right so that's a good base and then i'll do another layer and then this time i'll pick something a little bit more blue in it and i will make this bigger now it's like 600 i'll bring it down to 25 percent and i'll use that to help fill some of the gaps in the background the gap ground. All right, so it's not bad, not bad. And then I'll do one more layer. I'll do white with some real, I'll do very, very light blue. That's what I'll do. So it's almost white. I'm gonna bring the opacity, I mean, leave the opacity at 25, but bring the brush size back down to like 200 something. So I'll try to actually make it look like clouds or something in the background. Now I feel like Bob Ross, some happy little clouds for our dragon buddy here. Yeah, his name is, uh, his name is Zock. I didn't remember that, but that's okay. He'll tell me his name. Or maybe we'll make up a new name together. We can call him Buddy. Buddy. All right. Now, what I don't like about this is it's so accurate to the animation that there's, like, it, it looks that jarring way when you see a acetate film on top of a nice painted background. But I, I feel I should leave it and leave it at the percentage. Yeah, the mouth, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of pink in the mouth because he has pink in the mouth. Pink in the mouth sounds like a disease. I got some folded anatomy and pink in my mouth. Right. But just to, oops, wrong layer. I'll put the pink in the mouth just to delineate. Oh, I need to put that up at 100%. Because it, it, it's too much samey, that color there. Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. I, okay, I'm not going to put shading on him, but I am going to put a little bit of shading in the mountains there. 
because they look weird. Almost like I just had a rough and never finished it, because that's exactly what I did. All right, that's going to do that. Oh, that is terrible, but I'll put a little bit more. La, 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 la. Yep, going to be done. Okay, got to be done. I'm going to save as Zock 3, and I'll check the time. It's 34 minutes. So uh, that's, I think I actually did it in about 30 minutes because I had to stop once or twice uh, for various reasons when someone came in the room, I coughed, etc. Let me make that big so you can see a little better. Bloot. Bloot. There is Zock. Zock is he. Herculoids. So uh, thanks again to everybody that made suggestions and Mike Emirates and Tony Fucus. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I apologize. They are the ones who requested Herculoids. So this is for you babies. And that's it. Yeah, thanks a lot for checking it out. That was my half hour sketch of Zock from Herculoids. Um, I do a lot of warm up sketches on my Instagram. I don't always do videos of them. You can check out my channel. I've got comic art related stuff. I've got toy related stuff. I've got stupid regular vlogs. Whatever. You like cats? You like toys? You like art? You like a loud globber? Well, here you go. Okay, everybody. Thanks, and I hope you have some folded anatomy. Bye! I'm gonna cough. <coughs> And I am goodbye. I'm goodbye. Goodbye.